Good morning, beautiful people of Lagos, Nigeria, and you're welcome to Press Fire on Wazobia Max, UHF 57. My name is Agai Nishoma, and I am not alone on Press Fire today. Although Dapo Banjo is unavoidably absent as he has some national and official matters to attend to, but I'm being joined in the studio by Ajibike Ogunladi. Ajibike. You're welcome. Good morning, Ishima. Good morning, Lagos. It's an amazing opportunity to be here once again, you know, to talk about politics and you know, everything that's happening in the country. So thank you so much, Ishima, for having me on the show this morning. Amazing. And you know on Crossfire, it's our policy, and we believe in the sanctity of Nigeria. We believe in the progress and development of Nigeria. And everything we do here is for you, to keep you informed, to keep you entertained, but most importantly also to revive the Nigerian spirit. So, JBK, who do we have in Crossfire today? Okay, so today we have a very, very amazing person with us in the studio. Yes, he is the APC chieftain in Ondo State, um, or Ondo chapter, sorry, and then he is a security and social media consultant, and also he is the national chairman of the Association of Telematics Operators of Nigeria. Lagos, please welcome me, um, join me in welcoming Otsumba Olubemi Oyenei this morning. Good morning, sir. You're Thank welcome you. to Cross Five. Thank welcome you. to Cross Five. I hope it wasn't difficult getting into the studios because we had some challenges yesterday as regards traffic situation in Lagos. I hope it was mm -hmm. fair. Today is better, at least. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but I believe it, it has to do with the heavy rain, uh, downpour, yeah. and then because so many people are also preparing for Salah holiday, so, so many people mm -hmm. are on the road. Amazing. Okay, so today being Friday, we'll be going into, we'll be looking, taking a look at some of the stories that made around during the week. Although we may not be able to take all, but we'll take some of the crucial stories. It's Feedback Friday. Now, one of them on our list is the forthcoming elections in Ondo State. Well, INEC has given the date for the elections, which will hold on November 28, 2016. A lot of people are jeering, a lot of people are asking, how prepared is the APC? How prepared is the PDP? Irrespective of the fact that, yes, we're having situation reports that it seems the PDP in Ondo State currently are in, they're having some issues as to who should represent the PDP, who should be the official flag bearer of the PDP in the gubernatorial elections. Now, on Saturday, last week Saturday, the APC held their primaries, and there's been a lot of issues. Now, mm -hmm. from reports we were able to gather, now hundreds of party supporters and residents in Ikari Akoka took to the streets to protest. And what were they protesting about, basically? The emergence of Mr. Rotimi Akeridolu as the APC's flag bearer. And for a lot of people, they believe Mr. Shegu Abraham should have been the person to represent the APC. Sir, what do you, how do you see all this play out? I mean, at the end of the day, it's the people who will cast people. their vote. Yeah. So all of these, I mean, isn't it having a negative omen for the APC? Well, um, as we all know, politics um, ha has a lot of um, aspect. It, it, it has a lot of uh, dimension. It has a lot of metrics to it. And uh, Ondo State is, is very peculiar. But what is happening is also good for our, for the polity of, of Nigeria as a whole. It's also very good for the, dem, uh, the democratic process that we're going through. Now, um, whether you like it or not, initially it was said that, oh, somebody was being, you know, uh, imposed or whatever. But with what happened on Saturday, it was clear that there wasn't any, you know, form of imposition. Because, I mean, delegates, I was there live on the ground, and uh, number one, the election took place so peacefully. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any form of, you know, um, rowdiness or thuggery or, I mean, it, it was so amazing. And it all, also it showed the maturity of, you know, the voters, the, 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 the citizens as well, that, hey, we are maturing, and politics is not a do or die affair, mm -hmm. you know. And the result also amazed everybody. And it was clear that, hey, um, democracy has come to stay, and that the vote of the people actually counts this time around. So there is no um, game or any, you know, uh, antics being 
you know, or no form of maneuvering. And uh, for me, um, I just believe uh, it's a process and it is getting better. Now, it is also normal in any system, you know, that, okay, maybe those who didn't win, you know, would, you know, challenge maybe the result or whatever. But it's also good because there's also a process, you know, for them to, oh, um, lay their complaint and it is being heard as I speak to you now, at least they, they, they have been addressed. So if in one way or the other, if there's any form of, you know, um, misunderstanding or misconception, I believe it will be resolved in-house. APC is just one family. And whatever we do, we are all still, uh, you know, children of the same mother. So we will still come to table and say, hey, let us resolve this and move forward. What is most important now is the election in November, which is the governorship election. And that is why everybody, you know, must just put aside whatever issues now, let us face November 26th. Um, and then before we get to November 26th, you know, you said something that you were there live and direct during the election process and then everything went, you know, peaceful. And then some days later we have supposed that protesters coming to argue the contest the results of the election. So are you not trying to tell us that the the people that are protesting on behalf of their own candidate, the, um, the Mr. Adesoya, Adiso right? I got it right. No. Um, are they are they like not APC people or they are the third group part of APC people or because you also said that, you know, it's a family and then everything is happening, you know, even though you have um, issues within a family, you can there's a way to sort it out. So I'm just trying to say, like, if it's a family, then why are some people still coming to fight for to challenge the election? Yeah, fight for well, their own candidate. Well, you also know that even uh, in our own nucleus family, there will always be disagreements. It, it's also normal. It's part of you know life that even in in a school, even in a class, that somebody comes first, you can be sure that, hey, maybe somebody, you know, also feels that, hey, I, I should have scored more than this. But what is happening in um, APC and in Undo State particularly, I can tell you, it's just a normal reaction, you know, to the change. It's, it's a normal thing. And like I said, um, like I said, I mean, it, it, the, 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 the procedures, everything has been laid down. If you have any grievances, if you have, and I don't think there's ever been any election in Nigeria that has not been contested. Hmm. No, it's, it's, it's still part of our process. So, and uh, what I'm happy about is every milestone we've covered, there has been improvement. Every difficulty, every challenge, we've had, you know, the opportunity to um, go back to the drawing table and, you know, put things in a better light. I mean, in the history of Nigeria, I, the primary that was held last Saturday, it's, okay. it's, it, it, it was historical because that would be the first primary in Nigeria that will be held without a single, violence. you know, single report of violence, violence or any rowdiness. That's, that's even okay, the thing. Mr. Mr. Bimi, okay. I, of course we know, I mean, a lot of people, but a lot of people are also asking now, on those, well, it's being credited to the PDP, to the People's Democratic Party in Ondo State, that they have a strong root, a very strong base in Ondo State. And aside the fact that, I mean, people also have, have some people have worked the mathematics that look, the APs at the national level need to have Ondo State. That is the P APC, well, Ondo State should go to the APC because it's crucial for them in the sense that Ondo State being one of the Niger Delta states, it's crucial. I mean, and they're also seeking to capture Edo State. If they're able to capture these two states, for many, they believe it will be easy to bring the jinx mm -hmm. in Ekiti State currently. Well, I don't want us to go into the mathematics yet, but how prepared is the APC? What roadmaps does the APC have to make sure that it's able to win you know, the bulk of the voters, and what can they do also to align with the change idea of Mr. President and the APC at the national level if they win the elections? 
Well, you've actually mentioned some of the, <laughs> you, you, you know, um, okay. um, calculations. But what brought the APC into power was just simple. People just want change. It's normal. In every, I mean, and that's why they say that one thing that is constant in life is change that it gets to a certain point that people just want change. Whether, but unfortunately, whether, people are not accepting... No, 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 let me just... Whether the, whether the current system, you know, has any issue or not, it's just human, it's a human being that, hey, let me just have a taste of something else. Now, but in the case of Ondo State, yeah, 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 this is a state where civil servants have not been paid for over six months. What do you want to say? Um, it, 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 we have families that both, you know, father and mother, they are what? Teachers. What happens? And they've got two children. One is in secondary school. Another one is in the university. What happens? Hmm. People are already frustrated. I, uh, I, each, each time I, 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 I go home, it's a sorry case. People are in pain. People, and then, you know, the worst case scenario is, okay, this is also an election year for the state. And, you know, when you put that together, you can always know that, hey, the government ain't going to do anything anymore. You know, so what is going to happen? And that is where APC comes with a change. And also, you know, because APC actually is an amalgamation of all the other parties, you yeah. know, so it, 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 it has so much grassroots followership. And then, you know, the, the, the current, you know, government has not done anything people to cushion the effect. You know, apart from the fact that the nation itself is going through a rebirth. Okay. So APC is what the people are yearning for. And that is why it should not have surprised you why APC had over 50, you know, candidates, aspirants who wanted to be governor. Okay. And we have 24 who actually what, you know. Okay. Uh, All right, contested so, um, the primaries. Before you go, <laughs> continue. It's already getting very interesting. We need to go on a quick break. But before that, Ishama, can you quickly run through the headlines? Okay, okay. Um, well, we'll be looking at security. Just to give you, you know, a tip of the iceberg on what we'll be looking at when we return from the short break, we'll be looking at the economy. We'll be looking at security. We'll be looking at health, transportation, and so many other issues as it revolves around you and I. We'll go on the short break, and when we return, this is Crossfire. Stick around. We'll You welcome back, and this is the Crossfire with Ishama and Jibike. We have an amazing guest in the studio, and he is no other than Otumba Olubemi Oyeneyi, and he is an APC chieftain from the Ondo State chapter. And yes, he's been answering some of our questions as regards the forthcoming elections in Ondo State. But well, let's maybe we have to put aside the oh, Ondo State states, issues yes. and look at some national issues. Now mm -hmm. let's also look. Now yesterday there has been reports that. There's been reports of long queues in filling stations, and that has attributed to well, what we can call panic buying. And this is basically because of the speculation about possible increase in price of premium motor spirit, also known as PMS, otherwise known also as petrol. Now, for many, they believe that um, the substance, as the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, yesterday warned of threats to one of threats to product availability in the country. Now, this came as experts blamed marketers of insensitivity to price moderation when government placed a cap on petroleum price in May. But for other operators, they have argued that the price of petrol was driven by the law of economies, which could not be altered for a long time due to foreign exchange challenges. Well, we're back to the issue of PMS. Now, before we read out the other stories, you may want to address this. Now, 
In May, when the federal government came out you know, and fixed it's a definite price, a lot of people came out, a lot of economists came out and clamped down on that move. They said that was wrong, 145 with the current mm -hmm. economic realities. For a lot of people, they believe that was a direct, that was, you know, had to be imposed on Nigerians by the late APC government at the national level. Now, and also, I remember then our government promised that, you know what, you know, to, fight, to help, to help um, palliate the 145 Naira, you know, many more petrol stations will be available and then, you know, there will also be petrol so that people will not have to queue price and Price competition. But, yes, thank you, and there will be price competition. But somehow, somehow, it seems that all these wonderful promises then just, you know, it's just ebbing away and then, in fact, we're almost going to get into another price increase. So what, you know, what do you have to say well, about first, this? First and foremost, um, don't forget that the oil industry is actually being run. You know, and also, unfortunately, um, some of them may not actually uh, be a friend of this administration. And the reason is because also in the same industry, there is sabotage. Now, they did not, you know, what well, it surprised most of us when um, just within 24 hours, you know, when the price was increased to 145, all the filling stations had 12. Right? So... Oh what was happening yes the f within 24 hours when the price was increased all mm -hmm. the filling stations had fuel yes so what happened but they kept telling us fuel was not available it was not available there was scarcity and all that and it just showed that hey uh, we're nigerians uh, but some people are not just um, you know, making it easy for the government. And when the price was increased, you, it was done in good faith. It was done with all the economies and all that put together. That, okay, with the current exchange rate then, and then with the situation of the country and, you know, the refineries, that, yes, putting at this price, it will make it comfortable for all of them to be able to bring in the price, uh, the, 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 the product, product, and then be able to make it available. Mr. And Bimi. there was, yes. Mr. Bimi, this is Crestfire, and a lot of viewers are tuning in right now. Now, mm -hmm. on this show, we like, to, we like to tell the truth as it is, and also not raise the expectations of Nigerians you know, to an unbearable level. Now, before, before the elections, before the 2015 elections, the campaign promises of the APC included fixing the refineries, saying no to importation of petroleum products. Now, the APC, a lot of Nigerians voted for the APC based on these campaign promises. Change. Now, it's, it's, a lot, it's still baffling a lot of people that months after the APC has been elected, we are still importing petroleum products, not just at the regular 97 naira, which it was going for before now, but 145 naira, with the possibility that these prices may also be increased. Now the issue is, what measures are the federal government of Nigeria putting in place to make sure that, look, our refineries are working, and Nigerians can get this product, say, at a benchmark of 15 naira per litre? But I can tell you, number one, this administration is not going to increase. Nothing, anybody that is speculating that is just sabotage. Nobody is going to do so that. So there's no foil increase? No, that so, is not going to happen. Just, 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 that is not going to happen. Okay. Already. Now, don't forget, because you mentioned the issue of uh, the refinery and all that. Yeah. You, we're all in this country when the Avengers started blowing up all the pipelines. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, even if the government had fixed the refineries, how would they have what transported this product to all the stations that needed them? Now, what if, what now if, I can no, no, tell you, I can, if, I can tell if, you. Sir, what if the yeah. refineries were fixed? Because we know now that if those refineries are we were not, fixed, how that are would you have given birth to more job are we not opportunities to say NDAs for these that the resting the, the, the retrogression in the society because they how, keep on doing badness and then we cannot move forward because no. of them? How do you want to transport the product when the pipelines have been blown up and the 
is continuous, you know, I mean, a threat that no. they're going to blow up more. Now, what if, so what, what do you if, want the government to do? Uh, now, Jimike, Jimike, what if those refineries were fixed from the minute the government was sworn in? What if those refineries were fixed? We're talking about over 2,000 2, no, jobs don't forget for these that, youth. No. Now, if the refineries were fixed, mm -hmm. job opportunities would have been created. So there wouldn't have been any need for these youths to take to blowing up these pipelines. No, let me so just, let me is, just no, let's look you. at it from that angle. When this administration came in, mm -hmm. you, 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 you can remember that there was a point where the um, uh, Minister of State for Petroleum actually came up to say that the refinery were working at almost about 80% capacity. Yes. <laughs> and it was just shortly after then that we started, you know, hearing about the, you know, blowing up of the pipelines. So what do you want the government to do? How would they transport the product from the refineries? Okay, so Because I think we should face, you know, the reality and face the truth. Even if the refineries were working at 200% capacity, how you know, will the government move the product when the major pipelines were being blown up? And mind you, to repair pipelines, it's not something that you can do within a few weeks or a few months. And don't forget that even up to now, the government is still fighting, you know, to be able to at least protect all of these pipelines. Listen to me, the problem with Nigeria, if you actually look at the way the pipelines were laid all across the country, in some people's homes, you can actually see the pipeline right just at their backyard. There's a problem. And you're talking about all across the country. So it's easy for anybody that wants to damage or blow up or, you know, vandalize this pipeline to just do it at any point. Mm. And that is the greatest challenge the government is having. So where do you, how many points do you want to, you know, okay. protect? Now, you, you talked about, you mentioned, before we look at the other stories, now you mentioned something about looking at the current realities. Now, on Crossfire, we've talked about restructuring Nigeria. How will it help? Will it provide answers to some of the current econ economic challenges we're having in the country today. And well, sizable, a sizable number of our guests have spoken in favor of restructuring, not, also, not to forget also the public debate which has been held on restructuring. Now, imagine we have, imagine this government, well, at the national level, decides to consider restructuring, national restructuring, to say, okay, state, respective states, be in control of the resources you have. Use it to develop your state. Empower the local government, the local government, which certainly will be closest to the people so they can be able to deliver on the dividends of true democracy. Don't you think some of these problems would not be happening at the level it is today? Let us not forget that before the, the, you know, the, the birth of the APC, the ACN as a political party, even down to the AD, they all talked about restructuring Nigeria. So how come the APC is at the helm of affairs, and it seems that they're not giving credence to some of these brilliant ideas which can, which can help change the country? Okay, before we, um, before he answers the question, please, we have a caller from Ikoro. Okay. Victor, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Crestfire. Good morning. Yeah, I'm Victor from Ikoro. Please yeah, go ahead. Please, I just want to uh, tell that uh, your guest. You, you can see, the man is not just being sincere to himself. Yeah. Because if it's all this blame game, all this blame game, the pipelines are being blown up, this and that, it will not help the market. It doesn't help us at all. So the man should be sincere because these people, are, this APC government, I don't really know. They don't even get their act together. You know, a good leader looks for solutions to problems, and not to apportion blames. Are you with me? We can yes, sir. Yeah. So please, you should be sincere and tell the Nigerian what are really the manifestos according to their campaign policy. That's all. As, as I can see him on the TV as he's talking, the man is he's not being sincere to himself. Please do Nigeria not nice make your comments plainly. Do not attack the character or the personality of our guest. Thank you, Victor. OK. Um, I asked a question before we took Victor's call on restructuring. What's your belief? What's your idea on restructuring? Do you think it's the way to go, Nigeria? Do you think Nigeria is ready to toll the, you know, the part of restructuring at this moment? Well, um, 
the 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 birth of Nigeria, of course, has a lot of issues and a lot of areas. For from my own personal opinion, I know that regional autonomy and resource control is the best for any country. I can tell you that. But you know that for Nigeria's case, this is a constitutional issue. It's, it's something that, um, you know, it's, it's the National Assembly, the government ha must be able to sit on a round table and be able to, you know, come to terms with that. Now, I can, I can you know, say that since the, uh, this administration took over, of course, um, battling with the current issues, you know, has been the major um, attention of the government to be able to save the economy. I believe that once that is achieved, definitely the government is going to sit down to look at these areas. Right, like so, you rightly um, said. Before you continue, please, we need to go on a quick, quick break. Um, okay. Of course, when we come back, Crossfire and Mr. Olugun, we're still very much in the studio, and then we'll continue with all the discussions we have. Okay, thank you, and well, this is the Crossfire. Ishama and Jibike in the studio. Um, Mr. Oyeni, you were trying to talk, you were talking about restructuring. Nigeria. Is it the way to go? Yes, it's, it's, it's the way to go. It's, it's the next phase of, you know, of our history. And I believe this administration is going to, it's, it's, it's already thinking in that direction. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's also brief. take a quick look. <laughs> Very brief. Oh, yes. <laughs> let's take a look also at another interesting story. Now, the army is set to deploy 10,000 soldiers in the Niger Delta. Now, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukuru Buratai, has said the federal government of Nigeria would deploy 10,000 troops in the Niger Delta in 2017. Now, he said so far that the government has deployed 3,000 military personnel as part of its operation codenamed Operation Crocodile Smell in the region. Now, we're talking about, you know, the restiveness in the Niger Delta. Let's not even talk about the issues, you know, as regards Boko Haram and some other, mm -hmm. the headsman crisis and some other security challenges. But do you think deploying military personnel is the way to go in addressing the issue in the Niger Delta region? Well, um, I know the government is, is willing to um, talk um, negotiate, but also um, don't forget that it is the responsibility of the military to secure the nation's assets. It's their, um, you know, major uh, responsibility. responsibility and then our territory, you know, and all that. So um, for them to improve uh, in, in that regard, we shouldn't say that as if maybe they're going to the Niger Delta to go and, you know, uh, destroy the place. No, it's simply about securing the assets of the yeah, nation. Well, sometimes, okay. um, well, this is not the first time that our military or our troops, you know, go to... Okay, before I continue my question, we have Benga calling from Lagos. Benga, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Benga. Good morning, good morning Benga. Good morning, Benga. Yeah, actually, I just want to have a sense of this conversation with all this world's mind of statements now. Actually, you know, we Nigerians, we believe in you that you, APC, are going to do the changes for us in the uh, governorship or in the presidential seat. That's the reason why we voted you in. But with the situation right now, we, we, I, I would like to say that we even stayed up. We want you guys because we believe in you and we trusted in you. So why are you guys now complaining that everything TDP has spoiled everything before you guys? You believe in you. That's the reason why you voted this in. Just, um, I would like to tell you that we're even fed up with what you guys are doing. Okay. okay, thank Benga, you very much. Well, I couldn't he, quite said, get... um, he said that um, they believed in APC, we believed in APC, and then apparently some people are already getting fed up of, you know, the whole back and forth 
with all the campaign promises that were initially made. So that's what Benga was saying. Yes, it is normal. I mean, it is normal. We are all human. And whatever is happening uh, to this country is happening to everybody. No exemption. The only thing uh, I'm just going to appeal is the fact that maybe for the first time in the history of this country, we have a president that um, the world can attest that, OK, has a genuine intention to reform the country, reshape the country, and put us on a credible path. Now, um, but it has taken the government, you know, uh, uh, longer than expected. And it is normal for any Nigerian at this point to really get unsettled. But I can tell you that with that same belief that, you know, um, we all, um, you know, came to join hand in this administration, with that same belief, I, I just want to appeal that a little longer, we would begin to actually reap the benefit. Okay, okay. Because let me just quickly. Let's, let's we have a call, Frank. Frank. Oh, okay. Please. Right. Good morning, Frank. Hello. Um, I just want to contribute to this program. Yeah, thank you. But please, can you turn down the volume of your TV set so we can hear you clearly? I've done that already. All right, then. Thank, thank you. you. Go please ahead. go ahead. I want to speak to your guest today. It's not been, I mean, it's been economical with the truth. The fact remains that um, government is not in control of this food that is coming in. There's no way they can stop the price hike. The people in charge will increase the fuel, and there's nothing Nigerians can do about it. And we are just tired of this government. I don't know why they are deceiving us. They came with a lot of propaganda, and Nigerians take it hook, line, and sinker. Please, we are tired of this government. Okay, Frank. Thank you very much. All right, then. Thank you, Thank Frank. Thank you very much, Frank. Sir. All right. Yeah, it, it, it's good that people, you know, express their feeling. And I believe that I can tell you this is also a listening government. And I can tell you that the government is doing everything in its capacity and in its uh, wisdom to really put things um, into shape. I'm not going to um, come here to, I'm not speaking for government, I'm, I'm here in my capacity, and, but I, I, like I said, it's just to appeal that uh, we, for the first time, we have a government or a president that, you know, um, we believe in, and uh, we believe is listening and doing everything possible to be able to, you know, put an end to this. But uh, like I said, um, in terms of the fur hike thing, I mean, that is speculative. Okay, no, well, the government we have said, a oh. caller from oh, Sir right. Larry. <laughs> I apologize. Hello, David. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Good morning, morning. morning sister and our brother, and our brother on, uh, on the street. My question is this uh, I just want to ask if truly we are sincere to ourselves, as the people, as the one village um, um, in nation in this world. We have asked where the ex-men are killing people in different states. And uh, we heard that the uh, federal government are sending troops of army to Niger Delta. What about people of Senegal? What about people of uh, um, Benin State? These are human beings dying daily. What kind of sincerity can we prove as a leader? And yesterday we heard that yeah, we had that uh, change from change starts from me. What kind of change? But the Bible, uh, the, in the Bible, in the beginning, the God changed the darkness. He's the, he's the first, he is the leader. Okay, David. And, uh, another thing that when when uh, God is blaming uh, the leader in uh, Israel, he blamed Moses. He didn't blame the people that caused Moses to to sin. All right, David. You know when the head is shorting, what can the body do? Thank you very much, David, for your contribution. Okay, okay, now let's take a look at another story. Probably this may bring some level of succor and joy to our uh, audience. Now, the federal government of Nigeria has okayed loans from the World Bank, China, and Japan. Now, the federal government came out to inform Nigerians that it has approved plans for external loans from the World Bank, Japan, and China. China. It specifically said 
Nigeria will take loans from institutions such as the World Bank, African Development Bank, Japan International Corporation Agency, and Export Import Bank of China, Bloomberg report as was reported on Thursday by Bloomberg. Now, this will include low-cost and long-term loans with interest rates at 1.25% and a maturity period of 20 years. Now, the federal government also said that details of a proposed euro bond was due later this year and will be announced in due course. Now, according to the presidency, the government is now waiting for lawmakers to approve plan. its plan. Certainly, a lot of Nigerians, I mean, this is a sign of good things to come, particularly for the economy, as you know. But now, a lot of Nigerians also, popular opinion has it that, why should the government of Nigeria go ahead to borrow when we have, when the government has, you know, talk, made mentions of amounts of money saved, you know, mm -hmm. from the removal mm -hmm. of subsidy, made savings from the TSA, from the use of the TSA, the Treasury single account, mm -hmm. savings also, uh, recovered loot also. Yeah. So the people are wondering, why do we need to borrow again when the government can fix certain laws and mop up these funds from some of these other, you know, avenues? I mean, can you explain why? It's, it's, it's all... Uh, Part of government policy, number one, um, you find that whatever is being saved, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through the TSA and whatever is being recovered mm -hmm. is not enough to save our situation. Let me just tell you, the first thing, and if you really, really watch, this government is trying as much as possible to restructure in terms of our capital, you know, uh, uh, um, yes. yeah. That is, that is what this government, and that is why you have heard things like the railway. That's why I can tell you the airport. A lot of infrastructural redevelopment is what this government is concentrating on. And do you know why? When you have the facility in, all these facilities in place, okay. the economy naturally, I mean, you can testify that in terms of um, electricity generation, the government, I mean, in the history of Nigeria, since, since its independence, the highest we've had is about 4,000, you know, megawatts. Know. Now we are talking about at least they've been able to sustain 3,800, there about. This is what this administration will want to concentrate on. I can tell you if this government resolves power issue, transport issue, naturally economy is going to boom. And I can tell you. So, and you can also see the kind of loan and the interest this government has negotiated. Have you ever heard this in history? Less than 2%? This is what we're talking about. So if you're getting a loan, I mean, a long-term you know, loan, less than 2%, this will definitely gear, you know, economy. It's, it's natural. Every um, civilized country, what they build is not to dollar money you know, to people, mm -hmm. it's to just build infrastructure. Because if you give me, even if it's 12 hours of electricity that I have every day, I can tell you if, if I were to be a organizer or just even a, a, a fashion designer, it's going to improve the economy of my business. Okay, um, okay. okay um, yes, you know, money being borrowed and everything, and, you know, Nigerians are very, very hopeful at this point. So what's the assurance that all this money that is being borrowed now? It's not just going to enter one voicemail that nobody is sure of, and then, you know, where everybody is saying change starts with me, it's not more changes for all, it's not change starts with me. So are we sure this money is actually going to be used for what they are borrowing the money for? I can say it over and over and over and over again. One thing you will get from Mr. President and this administration, there is no money of Nigeria that is going to go into private pocket. Why? TSC has been put in place. I can tell you as of today, there is no ministry. The other day, we were to pay stamp duty or whatever, whatever, maybe like just a thousand naira. It had to be paid through the TSA, through remit account. There is no parastatal as of today, no ministry, no minister, no government official can just, you know, dip hand into government money anymore. It's gone. So any money that comes into this country, I can tell you it's going to be, it, it's safe under this administration. And that's why I'm just appealing. Um, change is never easy. 
Change is a process, but we are getting there. I can tell you that. Just a little longer, we will surely be there. Okay, now when you say just a little longer, now I know in 2009 when the Barack Obama administration took over with the affairs of the United States of America, America was in recession, deep recession for a long time, which not only affected America, but many other countries, because certainly America being a superpower and a lot of, having a lot of countries depend on it for their own economic survival. But President Barack Obama, it, some of his interviews, some of his, you know, public addresses, he always, he talked about spending, that without capital expenditure, you cannot take your country out of a recession. And yes, I mean, look at it today. America is doing fantastically well. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Mr. President is also born in that line of policy. But how long will all this take? Because certainly, Nigerians also, naturally, it seems like we're not naturally patient people. So how long should Nigerians expect some of this, you know, policies or this development to to take translate it. into economic prosperity and wealth. Remember, a lot of Nigerians are looking at 2019 that it's just around the corner mm -hmm. for Mr. President and the APC of the political party. So how long should Nigerians expect some of these things to begin to transform into economic wealth? Already we are seeing improvement in power. Everybody, at least most people can testify to that. We are already seeing the railway system come to life. It, the, the, all of this, and there are so many things gradually that if we just also want to look deep, we will see that in terms of infrastructure, and that's, that's, that's it's, it's good you mentioned, you know, um, uh, U.S. Uh, case. But don't forget that our own infrastructure I can't say they were in comatose. They were already rotten. They 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 did almost dead. So it's like we are actually rebuilding the nation the, in terms of infrastructure. So that is why up to now it's it's taken this long. But I can tell you the different phase of the country and the different sectors, we will begin to see improvement. I can tell you before the end of this year, we will be able to put certain things in place. Now, you've talked about, uh, you, you, you know, um, change begins with me and all that. Um, that is just simply in the context that most of the time, I mean, everything we, our life is import dependent. Everything we use, we eat, it's everything is imported. We are not exporting anything. It's just now. And you can also, if you have been reading through the papers, agriculture, government is putting a lot, a lot, a lot of attention into agriculture. And individuals, even like myself, I'm, I'll be going into agriculture also. It, it, because whether we like it or not, we need to change our perspective. And that's mm -hmm. what the president actually talks about. The change begins with you. If we don't change our lifestyle, if we don't change our thinking, it's, it's not going to help the nation. Because if all we do is to look for dollar to import things, what are we now exporting to end the dollar? The oil that brings the money is now half. What is going to happen? So naturally, it's going to affect. But agriculture, you know that most of us left agriculture. And now we must go back. Thankfully, most of the states have started. I can tell you now, they are advertising local rice at 8,000, 9,000 naira, while imported is about 20,000. So it's only a matter of time for people to begin to, oh, excuse me, well, I think I better go for a local rice. Which is held there. Ah, which is held there. Mm -hmm. And whether you like it or not, the, the, the farmers are going to improve. Now they are going to begin to do a lot of refining themselves, and you know, so it will improve. And we're already seeing talking some about of agriculture. That. Just let me just take like a quick, you know, take us back a bit. Talking about agriculture, you're talking farmers are going to, you know, improve in what they are doing and everything. Now, some of these farmers, farmers who need, you know, um, to uh, get loans, you know, to buy all these heavy yeah. equipment and everything. How accessible are they? Um, is the government to them when it comes to this, um, to this aspect and then sustainability? If the government says, okay, you know what? If you're a farmer, you know, intending farmer, you want to go into full-time agriculture, we have this loan for you. You will pay back, you know, with this uh, with this particular amount Certainly of interest. interest. Yes. Is this something that will just be, you know, for face value for the first maybe one two years, and after that it just um, it just fizzles out, or is some is this something that our government can actually, you know, continue so that it would encourage more people to, you know, to focus on agriculture? Number one, you have a president who is a farmer. 
So you have a minister of agriculture who is also into full-time mechanized farming. What else are you going to get in this administration? It's, it's nothing. So you already have two people who are into full-time agriculture. No, but, but the stakes, And the stakes, it's just no, normal. No, no, no. The stakes just, may just be hold different. On. No, the stakes just, may be different just, for them. No, just hold on. Now, okay. the states have realized that they can only improve their IGR through agriculture. And that is why most of the states now that are serious are going into mechanized farming. Because with agriculture, you, will, you, will, you can earn enough to run your state. With agriculture, you can export. With agriculture, you can, I, I mean, and that is the reorientation that we need. That, let us forget about this oil thing. Somebody will say, the oil will finish one day, so what is gonna happen? And I think the only lesson we can take from the recession that we are in is that let us go back to agriculture. Nigeria was built on, you know, agriculture. I mean, we had the, 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 the cocoa stuff, we had the, the granite, granite, uh, granite pyramid, we've got the palm oil and all that. So why did we leave all that? So in other words, you're saying the government is ready to support people that are ready to go into full-time Definitely a whole lot of, you know, scheme and programs and banks are already being, you know, and um, the interest rates are not going to choke people. I, I, I know, I can tell you we have a sincere government. I mean, we have a government that won't change. I can tell you that. So okay. all of these are actually being looked into. Okay, as a security expert also, another fundamental issue when it comes to developing the economy, improvements you know, in the, the economy of that country or a state is security. Now, as regards agriculture and security, Let's take a look also at the headsman attack which has been happening, particularly in you know in the agricultural you know areas and parts of the country. Now, this is something which for a lot of persons, if it's not addressed now by the government, it may just be another Boko Haram in the waiting. Security and agriculture. What is Mr. President's perspective? Now with the, the debate on ranching and you know, and the grazing reserve bill is still another you know, mind-boggling issue that a lot of Nigerians are still trying to come to terms with. But the issue of security and agriculture, what's government's focus on it? Well, I can tell you, I'm not speaking for the government, no, but I, I know that um, every aspect of, you know, um, securing people's lives and, you know, property or farm or whatever, is, is the prerogative of, of this administration. And I believe that they are um, doing something very, very, very um, serious about that. I mean, that's, that's all I can say. Hmm. Okay. okay, let's quickly take a look at, um, talk about a justice. Uh, yes. Forthcoming elections. Now, the elections were slated to take place September 10th, 2016, but has Tomorrow. been postponed. The elections has been postponed, and well, the elections will be taking place, you know, November, sorry, September 20, 28, September 28, 2016. Now, a lot of, you know, individuals have been talking about the postponement, saying it's a slap on democracy. But of course, the security agencies came out and gave the reasons for the yeah. postponement, particularly because of security reports for the seller period. Do you think that was a good enough reason to postpone the elections? Oh, of, of course. I mean, if, if the security operators cannot guarantee the security of the people, that's, 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 that's the normal thing. We shouldn't look at it from uh, any political uh, uh, scheming or whatever. But if the security operatives, by their own assessment, feel that, hey, and then we have, you know, a uh, Muslim holiday coming up then, it's 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 justified and we should just we shouldn't politicize that it's it's from them i mean so i think that is that is in order and then we hope also while some of these you know electoral reforms are taking place by INEC, we also hope that soon we can also have you know electoral voting system in place do you think we can have that before the 2019 general elections i hope so that is going to be the best for us um the PVC experiment, yeah, made a lot of sense, and it made things easier. 
and it actually also improved the credibility to 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 some extent of you know the voting system so i also believe this administration must be looking at you know total you know um, electronic voting system you know to be put in place before 2019. hopefully well we all can hope pray do our own bit and remember also that change starts That's with you you and i it's not a magic word Change starts with you and I. Thank you so much for joining us on Crossfire. Thank you so much. This much. is how much we can take on the program today. Thank you, Jimmy Care. Thank, Thank you, you for Nigerians. having me. Stay safe, be patriotic, and remember change starts. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.